let me just correct one thing. Without the Lord, am I, am I too, what am I doing here? It was okay. It's not going to work now. Okay, where's the handheld? Okay. I'm Hallelujah. on fire, that's why. I'm on fire for the Lord. Too much energy going through here. Is this working? Is this working? Yeah. Now I need to turn this off. Okay. Praise God. Praise God. To God be all the glory for everything that he has told you. I don't have a problem stepping out in faith. I don't lead, but I follow. I follow the Lord. And if, if, if he speaks something to me, or I, you know, I, I think, well, you know what? There's nothing wrong with stepping out in faith. If we can see it all in front of us and how to do it, that's not stepping out in faith, is it? So if, you, if God gives you a word or, or, or you feel something in your spirit, you look for confirmation and you step out in faith and he does the rest. So praise God. Praise God. I love where he's put me this time of my life. I can tell you not, you know, and of course we, we've shared our story before and this is about mothers. But I can tell you this, that the ending is always better than the beginning, no matter where God's taking you. It's a journey. It's a journey. But you know, I was in the same position and with, without... You know, God knows what we need. But above that, he knows who we need. We could have met anybody along the way. We could have made decisions in our flesh as to what we thought was right for us. But God made this decision. It was a divine appointment. So praise God for where he's taken us. I'm not afraid to step out and go that way. Um, I want to start out with Happy Mother's Day to everybody. And the scripture I want to start out with is Isaiah 66, 12 to 13. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye feed, ye shall be feed or suck, you shall be born upon her sides. We carry a baby on our hip a lot when we have our children, don't we? And we bounce them on our knees. As one who his mother, whom his mother comforted, so I will comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. Did you know God mothers you? We speak of God as our father a lot, don't we? But did you know God mothers you? He puts those instincts in us, so he knows how to mother us. And, you know, I, I, I want to say one thing to Norma. He has blessed me with Norma. I lost my mom in 2020, summer of 2020. Norma, he has comforted me with a new mother, a bonus mom. Praise you, and I love you, and I love you. And she, so God comforts us through other people. He comforts us in different ways in different seasons. There's another thing, I, I, another thing I'm very thankful for, Justin, who's up here running the live stream. Justin, are you back there hiding? Okay, you know, I lost a son, but it doesn't matter that, that I lost a son. God brings other people into our lives. And for this season, he has placed Justin in my life, and I want to be his bonus mom. This is my bonus mom. You know, I can't replace his mom. She can't replace my mom. But, but God comforts us through other people. He's put that in us. We have different kinds of mothers in different seasons. Um, so I want, to I want to start out with, and the way that I go, I'm going to go through this is I was a teenage mom. I was married at 16 and a mom at 17. You know, when you're a teenage mom, what do you know about babies, right? What do you know? The only baby I ever held was my first child. My first child. I had babysat as a teenager, but they were school-age children. They weren't babies that needed cuddling and diaper changing and fed and all you know you watch them when they breathe to be sure they're they're breathing we don't we don't know they don't come come with instructions do they so I'm not just speaking to the moms today I'm also speaking to the dads in the house because you had a mom that took care of you in this way was she a teenage mom did she know everything did she do everything right I didn't do everything right I was a teenage mom. It wouldn't have mattered if I was a first-time mom at 30 or 40. I, I, I didn't know how to be a mom. God put those instincts in me. And, and we kind of just learn as we go, don't we? Um, then my first baby had three-month colic. Anybody heard three-month colic? Well, I didn't hear about it until my baby had it. 
And he cried all the time, day and night, day and night, day and night he cried. Well, uh, his... His father was in the Navy, and he was sent on a tour of duty when he was two days old, and I was still in the hospital, and he was gone for six months. So I went home to be with my parents, and one night I would sleep, and one night my mom would sleep, and we took turns walking him all night. You would think I wouldn't have any more children, right? Well, let's just say God had different plans for my life. But we rocked him, we walked him, and then when he became a toddler, discipline, and those that, you, that know me know I have a military mom attitude, but I didn't want him hurt. If I saw him playing in the yard and, and when I'd be out there with him and he would head toward the street, I would spank his little behind and get him right back up there and teach him, don't go that way again. As the government teaches in the DHS when you start a daycare, which I helped, I did not work in one. I'm not called to do that, but I helped set it up for a church one time. They are, they are not able to tell their children no at the daycare. You have to distract them with something else. You know, if they, if they, just run, if, if they bite a child or they run over here and throw toys or try to head out the door, you have to get in front of them and distract them. Does anybody see the difference in our children, uh, some of them today, than they were back when we used to take them out behind the barn? Okay. Uh, Pastor knew I was probably bring that up because I had a fly swatter when I was raising my kids. I had four, four children by the time I was 24. But I want to say in Psalm 127, 3 through 5, children are a heritage from the Lord and offspring a reward from Him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full. This one would cry. I was very young when I had my children. Like I said, I was 24 years old. So I want to talk about if you've got a lot of children. I had four. That was a lot to me because by the time I had three, I thought you might as well have a dozen because you can only hold two at a time, one on this hip and hold their hand here, right? Well, by the time number three comes along, what do you do? I did not believe in dropping my kids off at a daycare or dropping my kids off with grandma while I went grocery shopping. Now, I had a daughter-in-law that thought I should watch the baby while she went grocery shopping, and I'm like, give me a break. I've got four. Can you not go to the grocery store with your children? It's your job to raise your children. It's not your parents' job to raise your children. It is your responsibility to raise your children. So when I went to the grocery store with four, I had one buggy with a baby and a carrier right here, a toddler in this part, and I pulled the other buggy with, for the groceries that I was buying because they wouldn't fit in the buggy because I had two kids. And so I pulled another buggy, and there was two little kids back there walking that were told, you hang on to the side of that buggy. If you let go of it, we know where the fly sweater is, right? So you're, we're not going to lo lose you running down some aisle. Um, so, so a discipline is very important. You, you know, the, the word says to train up a child in the way they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart from it. Well, how do you train your children? How do you train them? Do you drop them off at grandma's? Do you uh, take them to a daycare and leave them all day? Well, sometimes you have to when you work. So, you know, I'm not speaking against that because, you know, I, that, that's needed sometimes. But when you have them at home, do you train them or do you distract them? That is, that's two different things. You train them or you distract them. The word says to train them. You know, when my children were growing up and when they were, were small, I thought I had to make everything from scratch or their little brains would not develop. So before they got on the school bus in the morning, they had biscuits and gravy or bacon and sausage or, you know, uh, you know eggs, you know, wh whatever you cook. I thought that their brains would not develop and they wouldn't make good grades in school if they weren't fed correctly. I was not a health nut. I was a mom, just a mom. Well, years later, I learned that I have one sister, is all, one sister. Years later, I learned that my sister had raised her children on cereal. I thought, oh, heavens, cereal. Honestly, all of her children, guess what? They grew up just fine. They were fine. Their minds were fine. They're, they, they have good jobs today. They have families. They're able to, you know, function in the world. 
If I had known that, my kids would have had cereal. Probably, probably a lot more often uh, because we didn't have it very much. Um, I'm not saying I'm a perfect mom. I am by far not a perfect mom at all. I made many mistakes along the way, things I wish I could turn back the clock and, and change. But the one thing that I would, if I, I would change, if I had one more day that I could turn back the clock with my children, it would be to hold them and rock them one more time. Just to have that baby's head on my shoulder. Just to rock them. That's how a mother comforts. That's how a baby feels loved. You don't hold your baby and you don't rock your baby and you don't love on your baby. They're not going to know what love is. They're not going to know who God is. And when you're raising children, don't think that you have to, well, I haven't had spent time in the prayer, my prayer closet today, right? I haven't had time to talk to God today because my baby has been crying all day. I haven't had time to spend in the Word because these kids are running me crazy. They're running in and out the door and they're letting the dog in the house and they're leaving the gate open outside and they're leaving the dirty clothes everywhere and I've got to wash and iron and cook and, and I, I'm going crazy. How am I going to spend any time with God? Well, I'm going to tell you how you can spend time with God. I saw God every time I rocked my baby. I saw God every time I looked in their eyes. I saw God every time they talked to me. I saw God every time they, they, they smiled at me. I could see Jesus in them because he gave me those children. And I could see him in their eyes. And I could feel him when I held my babies in my arms. I could, I could feel God. So don't tell me you don't have time to spend with God. If you're spending time with your children and you're training them up the way his word tells you, you are spending time with the Lord. In Proverbs 29, 17, I love this scripture. Discipline your children, your children, and they will give you peace. Are your children giving you peace? Or are they running wild in the cities when the riots? Are they, are, are they rebellious? Are they taught back to their teachers? Are you called in all the time for disruptions? Now, kids are going to be kids, but this, this comes in training, right? But is your household full of turmoil because of your kids' actions? Because of the way they act or the way they talk back to you? Well, the Lord says right here, if you discipline your children, they will give you peace. If you don't have peace in your home with your children, maybe you ought to look at were you distracting them or were you disciplining them? Being a mom is more than just being a mom. God gives, us, God gives us instructions. You want instructions for raising a child? You look in the Word. If you're too busy taking care of those kids, you ask God. He will talk to you. He will tell you. I was also a working mom. I know a lot of, my, a lot of moms have to work. I can't say that I had to, but once they got into into school, I did take a job and uh, worked, and uh, I was there to cook their breakfast, make sure they made their beds, make sure they got their homework, and got on the school bus before I left for work and drove 15 miles to work. By the time I got off of work and got home, they'd been off of the school bus for about 30 minutes. I thought, what can they do in 30 minutes, right, four kids? Well, they can do a lot in 30 minutes. So I, I usually sped home <laughs> to make sure everything was in one piece. And, and I'll just tell you a funny story right here. I had three boys and one girl. And every time I would leave the house, I would lecture the oldest boy, the first child. I would give him a lecture of, don't you do this and don't you do that. And you make sure this and you make sure that, right? Make sure that things, you know, go good and that you watch over your brothers and sisters, well, after they grew up, I found out he wasn't, he wasn't the one that was keeping everybody in line. It was my daughter, one girl. She would lock them out of the house if they didn't do what she wanted them to do. I didn't know this because they wouldn't tell on her because she was tough. She was one girl with three boys. And they said, Mom, you don't know what Amy 
did when she was young. She locked us. And I'm like, what? She? Well, guess what she does today? She's an investigator with the district attorney's office. And she, she is a cop. She is like, you know, she keeps, she, when she first got certified, she said, Mom, I just can't wait to arrest somebody. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. I said, make sure it's not one of your brothers. Because <laughs> I could just see her throwing them over a, the hood of a car and handcuffing them just to get them back, you know. Um, but, but a working mom has a lot of duties. You know, the washer and dryer was going when I left for work in the morning, and the washer and dryer was going when I got home from work. How does a mom do all that and find time for God when you're a working mom? I've told you how she can find time for God when she's got babies at home. But how do you find, out, find time for God when you're a working mom and you've got all these duties and responsibilities, not only on your job, but at home? You've got to have the kids make sure they do their homework. You've got to make sure the dog's fed, the trash is carried out. You make sure that the clothes are ironed because back then we, closed, we ironed clothes, or I did anyway. And it's like, how can you do all that and make time for God? Well, I'm here to tell you that it's in taking care of my kids and training them is how I could see God. It's in cleaning my home that he provided for me that I could see God. You may not understand this, but when I go in and, and get a dust rag and start polishing my furniture or wiping off smudge things on the refrigerator, I just thanking God for what he's provided for me. You can see God all around you if you just look. If you just look, in this nation, we are rich, whether you have little or you have a lot. If you have God, you are rich. Whatever you, if you have God, if you have God, you can see him in everything. Whenever I get my house clean and things are picked up and I like things in order, but the reason I like things in order is because God gave me those things and I want to take care of them. And I want him to look down and say, she likes what I've done for her. She's enjoying the blessings of God. I don't take those lightly. I don't take them. I, the, the, I, I'm not a, a person that's materialistic minded. But if God blesses me with something, I want to take care of it. And I'm going to tell you this. And, and also in Luke 2.51, it says that Mary treasured all the things in her heart that she knew about Jesus, that the Holy Spirit has spoken to her. Mary treasured things in her heart that she knew about her children. I want to tell you that I, there's things that us as mothers know about our kids that dads may not know because we're mothers and we have that instinct. We know how they feel. We know how they think. We know what they're feeling. We know their emotions because we're their mother. We carried them for nine months. We know them. There's things I treasure in my heart. I knew that my middle son was so soft-hearted and Jody, I know you're probably going to listen to this, and you probably don't want the whole world to know, but now they do. You, he had such a soft heart, but as a teenager, he, you know, he's going to be macho. You know, he's, you know, he's going to be the man or whatever, like you guys all want to do when you're growing up. And he is the man. He is a grown man. He's a grandpa. All my kids are grandparents now. But, you know, he had a soft heart, and I knew if God ever filled him with the Holy Spirit, he, that boy would win everybody he spoke to to Christ because of his heart. He would have a soft heart, and he would receive whatever God put in him. I knew that. I treasured that in my heart when he walked through different things in his life and whenever he went through things that were tough and things that mom thinks, oh, what now? I would treasure those things in my heart. I know that I know that I know God is going to get a hold of that heart and he is going to tell everybody who God is. I knew. And last Mother's Day, he came to church here. He had been filled with the Holy Spirit and he is out there preaching all over Facebook. Thank you, Jesus, for the treasures in our heart that you speak to us with our children, about our children. That's because you know your child my youngest child, he thinks everything's funny. He always thought everything was funny. Even when I spanked him or corrected him, you couldn't make him quit laughing no matter how hard I would spank him. And I said, you better wipe that grin off your face or I'm going to spank you again. I remember him saying, Mom, I can't help it. You look so funny when you're mad. And I'm like, well, that just made me a little madder. But uh, 
And he is a good boy. But, you know, our kids are different. They handle relationships different. That youngest boy of mine, he's quiet about his emotional things. He's fun and, he's, and, and, he's, um, and, and he has a great time, but he doesn't talk about his feelings. And that's okay. That's his personality. That's all right. But one day I said something about, would you pray for, for maybe his brother? I can't remember what it was. But anyway, he said, Mom, I pray for all of y'all every night. Don't, doesn't everybody? And I'm like, whoa. You know, you don't know what you've taught that child. You don't know because their character, their personality is different. You don't know their relationship with God. When, whenever somebody, you've got a child that's everything's funny, and then you go, whoa, he's praying every night for his brothers and his sisters, for his family, for his children. And I'm like, I am a blessed woman. I am a blessed woman. Are, is, is he in church and serving God? He's not in church, but you know what? He is in God. God is in him. And that's what I want. And that God will lead them from there for whatever their call is. I want you to know your relationship with your mom is unique. How many of you had a good mom? How many of you didn't? You don't have to raise your hand. Um, rela relationships with mom can be very challenging, very challenging. And uh, our relationships are so unique, but they're unique to who your mom is, and they're also unique to who you are. I was very independent. I remember my mother telling me, my mom and I did not have a good relationship until about two years before she passed away. I mean, she lived in my town and uh, for the last 25 years of her life, her and my dad, and, you know, and we helped um, taking them to doctor's appointments, and they were at my house every holiday, every, you know, everything that we did, but we, did, we weren't close, but she was close to my sister. Well, you know, my sister's only 18 months younger, but she's the baby. We all have a baby, don't we? And I was the oldest. Well, the oldest are usually expected to do right. And I was the same way with my oldest child. Boy, he was going to get a bath every four, fed every four hours, a bath two times a day. And what else did the doctor tell me in that little pamphlet? And he was going to have this and this. And, you know, by the time I had that fourth child, you know what? I propped the bottle up while I was bathing the two-year-old and peeping out the window to make sure the other two kids hadn't got out of the yard. And you know what? They all grew up just fine. They all grew up just fine. It depends on where you are in, your, in, in the order of children in your family. It depends on who your mom is. My mom did not have a model to even go by. Her mom died when she was seven. And an aunt raised her, an aunt and an uncle, through the Depression, and they already had a house full of kids. They took them in just because that, that was their duty. So she lived with discipline, but, you know, that's... Um, she was a seven years old, and she lived there six years, and she married my dad when she was 15, had me when I was 16. She didn't know much about being a mom at that time, and I'll go into that a little later. But, um, but relationships, relationships with our children. I was always an overprotective mom, still am. If, if my son posts on Facebook, he's out there riding his motorcycle, I'm like, oh, Jesus, send the angels, one on the front, one on the back, and one on each side, and guard him on that highway. That, those motorcycles are dangerous. And then if they're out in the boat, oh, Jesus, protect them. The boats can be dangerous. You know, how do we protect our children? We protect them through prayer um, and, uh, and lots of discipline. I was, a di of course, a disciplined mom. But I, I'm here to tell you, if you always are an open... I, I was always an overprotective mom. But if we protect our children from everything, I want you to write this down. They will never learn anything. If we protect our children from everything, they will never learn anything. Do you ever wonder how God could allow his son to walk through the cruc crucifixion? Put yourself in his shoes if you have a son. The stripes on his back, the crown of thorns on his head, the nail spikes in his hands and his feet, and death. That was his only son. That was his only son. What have you watched your child walk through? What have you allowed your child to walk through? We would not have eternal life and salvation even available to us if God had withdrew the sacrifice of his child and bailed him out. If God had stepped in and built him, oh, no, 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 come back. 
we wouldn't have a perfect lamb sacrificed. We would not have eternal life. What are you protecting your child from by bailing them out? What are you protecting your child from? You might say, well, my child's only 19. Your child is grown if they're 19. They need your prayers. They need your direction. They don't need you to bail them out. How will they ever learn to cry out for God? Ever. Ever. I didn't say it was easy. It was, it's hard for me to watch my kids go, go, go through hard times. But you be, there and you, you be there and bail them out. Bail them out. They'll never learn to cry for God. They'll cry for mom. Mom. Are you willing to let your own child go through their trials? You cannot just kiss their hurts away when they're grown. And I'm going to say grown is over 18. If you can join the military at 18, if you can be graduating from high school, you don't need your mommy to bail you out of anything. You need your mommy to be there to love you and to pray for you and to give you guidance when needed. Exodus 20 and 12 says, Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long upon the land which the Lord your God is giving you. So if we have any children here and we don't, we have no children in here today, but I don't care how old you are, you're to honor your father and mother always. Even though I didn't have a close relationship with my mom, I honored her. I honored her position. I honored that. Could I talk to her about private things? No. I had girlfriends I talked to about private things, good Christian girlfriends. My mom was a Christian. She was a Christian. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will show us things to come as parents. And the knowing that he shows us brings us hope when the future seems hopeless. If you've got a child that you think, oh my, how am I going to get through this? I want you to refer back to that knowing that the Holy Spirit puts in you because that's what truth is. That's what truth is. Fear of, oh my gosh, they're on the wrong road. Fear of, oh my gosh, this is going to happen. That's the enemy. God's word said he would protect our children. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. How about you? I want to remind you of something. God did not say, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in perfection. He didn't say that. Our children aren't perfect. But you know what? Neither are we. We're not perfect today. We won't be perfected until we get to heaven. So don't be hard on yourself and don't blame yourself if you have, have feel like you failed in any way. Because we all have failed and we're going to fail again because we're human, right? But don't make a habit of it. Get up and see what the Word says. My next season, and not everybody's been here, but my next season of motherhood to talk about is having a child in heaven. My oldest son passed away on Christmas Eve 20, 2020. He's been gone two years. I lost my mom in July of 2020. lost my son on December the 24th. And you know, when I'm reading in, 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 the, in the Word and studying a little bit about this, when Jesus suffered and died on the cross, it's not recorded that Mary questioned whether or not she had heard God's direction for her life in the first place. She could have questioned, couldn't she? She was given the Son of God to raise and I'm sure she thought he was going to way outlive her and that he had a long ministry on this earth. I'm sure that that's what she was thinking. And all of a sudden, everything kind of blows up in her face, doesn't it? And she's standing at the bottom of the cross watching her son be tortured and crucified. What mother in here would not say, God, are you sure this was your plan? I think we all would question that, wouldn't we? But all, of, all that the Word recorded it said that she wept. It doesn't, it doesn't say that she, did, that she questioned God. She wept. And she continued on. And she didn't allow herself to be overwhelmed. She trusted God with his plan. You know, I can become overwhelmed easily. Any mom or dad can be overwhelmed easily if they pull out the baby pictures. And you start looking at, Oh, I remember when he caught that fish. My son loved to fish. 
I can remember when we went fishing and he, I had to help him get that off his hook. I remembered helping him pull in that big fish when he couldn't get it in by himself. I remember helping him with his bicycle and I remember helping him with his homework. It doesn't take very long for the tears to come and you get overwhelmed and your spirit's just like, oh. So when I look at pictures of Shannon, I'm like, I miss you, son. I love you. That's it. Because as a mom, I can't sit down and look at pictures very long. But that's okay. I am not going to be overwhelmed. I'm going to go forward with what God's called me to do. You can get overwhelmed in your sorrows, and you can make your sorrow become a way of life. And I'm telling you, if you make your sorrow become a way of life, you're going to die in your sorrow. And you're not going to lead anybody to Christ because nobody's going to want what you have if you can't make it through, through a death with a, and you have God in your heart. After we got the news that, that Shannon had passed away that morning at 4.30, my daughter called me. And he was home and he had fallen and um, he had diabetes. But anyway, he, he had fallen and I don't know what happened. I don't know if a port got moved. He had, he had just got um, signed up for, um, what's it called? Anyway, where they put the, yeah, for dialysis. And uh, so I don't know if the port moved and he bled out or what happened, but his girlfriend went back in to, um, to check on him after he fell, and he was gone. I didn't ask God why, but it was Christmas Eve, and we were headed to Oklahoma. And I know some of you have heard this, but anyway, this has to, this has to do with how to get through things like this. Not everybody has lost a child, but you know what? If you haven't lost a child or you don't have a child, you may, you may one day witness to someone that does have a child that's lost a child. And it's important to know what God's Word says. And, you know, he told me I was getting ready to go to Oklahoma because we were going that day to be with all the kids in, uh, on Christmas Eve. And the Lord said, I rescued Shannon. And I'm just sitting there thinking, you rescued him. He said, I rescued him to heaven. I rescued you to Missouri. God rescues us in different ways. But he said, I rescued Shannon to heaven. My first baby, now in God's loving arms. And I don't allow myself to be overwhelmed. Because I have a job to do. I have a call from, by, the, by the most high God. And I'm going to fulfill that call. Nobody's going to want what I have if I can't make it through my trials with God. And we can make it through if we look at God and focus to him first. In Isaiah 49, 25, it says, For I will contend with him who contends with you. Now, this is what God spoke to me right after this happened. I mean, within, within an hour or so. And you may have, you, you may have given me that, that scripture. I, I don't know, but it says, I will contend with him who contends with you, and I will save, and this is in parentheses in the Amplified Bible, defend, preserve, rescue, or deliver your children. So he could have defended him if there was anything other. I mean, he could have defended him if there was anything. There was a question about his death. But he could have defended him at that moment. He could have preserved his life at that moment. He could have rescued him at that moment. Or he could have delivered him and healed him. And he could have been preaching God's word the rest of his life. But you know what? This is where our faith and our trust has to be in God, in his plan, not ours. Any mom's plan would be, heal him, Lord, and that's the way you would pray, and that's the way I prayed. But you know what? God's plan is bigger and mightier and better than my plan. It's better than my plan. That boy made it to heaven because God showed me that he did. He said, I rescued him. Thank you, Lord. I, as a mom, don't have to question that anymore. So trust and allow God to be God. Don't try to play God in your child's life. If you try to play God in your child's life, he'll have ne have never have nothing more than mommy taking care of him. A grandma, oh my goodness. When I became a grandma, it was wonderful. How many of you have grandchildren? They are precious, aren't they? Grandchildren are precious. I also had the joy of helping raise two of my 14 grandchildren. I have 14 grandchildren. Did you know that grandchildren are cute no matter what they're doing? You know, they're, they're just a little bit different than your children, aren't they? 
It's like, you know, you can see your child go do something wrong, and you're like, why did you do that? Who's raising you? You see your grandchild do it and say, oh, here, let Grandma help you. It's totally a different life. We can find something good in just about everything they do. I think grandmothers focus more on the love, and they have a little more patience. I don't have a lot of patience, but I had a little more patience. God's given us grandchildren to cuddle with, to love on, and to send home when they whine. Oh, my goodness, I cannot stand whining. They can slam the door all day long or let the dog in and out too many times, but don't whine because we'll have to get the fly sweater out. I, I went on a trip one time, and my little granddaughter that was with me a whole lot, she said, what'd you bring me, Grandma? What'd you bring me? Because I'd always bring, you know, bring them a little something. And I had a great big sign. It's about like that. And it said, no whining. She was about seven, and she could read. Grandma, that's what you brought me? Yeah, I don't want you to ever forget. And so that hung in my house, and it's still in my house today. It's on, it's on my desk, and no whining. Whining just really gets to me. I don't know why. It just does. But for grandchildren, my fly swatter still hangs in sight where they know Grandma will use it if she has to. Discipline's important to raise up a child to be a healthy, respectful adult. And, you know, I want to say, you know, we go from glory to glory to glory in our spiritual life, don't we? Well, I can tell you this as moms of children, we go from glory as a mom to glory as a grandma to even a higher glory as a great-grandma. It's glory to glory to glory. Seasons change, and we should enjoy each one of them. Great-grandma. I'm a great-grandma. I have 15 great-grandchildren, 15. And we have twins on the way in about three or four months, I think. Uh, one of my granddaughters expecting twins. She got a three-year-old. That'll make 17 great-grandchildren. Oh, these babies, let me tell you, great-grandbabies, they're perfect in every way. Every way. Great-grandbabies, they'll never even know I have a fly swatter. They'll never see it. They'll never see it. And you know why? Because they have parents to raise them. And they have grandparents to let those parents know that, mm, maybe you should, maybe you shouldn't. But great-grandma, we just get to enjoy. We get to just enjoy those kids. And you know what? They can just run it. And they love us. They love us no matter what. That's because they don't know I have a fly sweater. And uh, praise God. They are such a blessing. Proverbs 17, 6 says, Children's children are a crown to the aged, and parents are the pride of their children. Children's children are a crown. But our children's children's children, they're the jewels and the crown. They're all so precious. They are all precious. Now, I don't want you to think that all my children are perfect, that all my grandchildren are perfect. One of my granddaughters has a little kids that she calls her feral children because she, she just lets them go and run and do. And hi, Alicia, I know you're listening. I love you. And uh, she's got a beautiful family. And, you know, she raises her children a little. She works all the time, but she raises them a little different than I do or would. They're precious kids, but they're, they are allowed to run and play in the house. And, you know, I, I didn't allow my kids. They, they played outside. You know, if you're going to be loud, go outside. I, you know, we had 200 acres. We lived out in the country, and they all they had stuff to do out there. They could go feed the cows or go ride the horse or go fishing in the pond. They had things they could do. They didn't have games and things to do in the house. Doesn't make my way right and her way wrong at all. It's unique to who she is. It's unique to who her mom is. It's unique to their situation. It's unique to their family. In no way is my way right and your way wrong. In no way is my way wrong and your way right. God teaches us all how to raise our children. We just need to raise them by the word and everything else falls into place. I also have... Anybody in here stepmom? Stepmoms? Well, they're our bonus children. When Chris and I married, I got another son. And then we found out we had a daughter. And it's like, thank you, Jesus, that you just keep adding. 
Our quiver is full. And God said the arrows are blessings. And the Father God has blessed us. He just keeps blessing us. How big a quiver do we have? It's huge. We have 21 grandchildren between us. We have 15 great-grandkids and, and, and two more on the way shortly. Our quiver is full. Children are a heritage from the Lord. And I know I've already read that. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. We are blessed. We are blessed. I want to leave you with a thought this Mother's Day that all the Mother's Day cards that you look out there and you see, and it talks all about what a good mother you are and how blessed I am that you're my mom and all the little flowery things that you say on a holiday, right? Everybody's probably gotten one. Well, what kind of card do you buy if you don't get along with your mom? Do you go through those cards a lot and try to find one that fits that situation? Do you? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, LaVon? Okay. Well, one year, and don't get up and walk out on me. I said already I'm not perfect, okay? And I'm just like, oh, it was just one of those seasons that my mom and I was just like, oh, my goodness, you know? And um, I thought, it's Mother's Day. What can I get? Oh, you've been the most best mom. Believe me, if you get a card from me, or if I say something to you, it's truth. It's the way I feel. I, don't, I can't hide my feelings. I wish I could, but my mom used to tell me it's all over your face. And I'm like, I can't hide that. I just can't hide it. And I'm thinking, i got to find a card. i got to find a card. Well, I found a card that says, Dear Mom, on this beautiful Mother's Day, I hope you get everything that you deserve. I thought, I'll take it. <laughs> I said I'm not perfect, right? Um, but we all have family relationships that can be challenging. And this Mother's Day, I don't want to make light of that it's all about how great our mothers are. God created and gave us mothers, and they are unique to what their situation is. My mom and I, she wrote a poem about me, which I did not get until after she passed away. My sister had it and found it in, in some of her things. But she had written a poem. And I, you know, I, no, I guess I actually, yeah, anyway, she had written it several years ago. And she talked about having her first child at the age of 16. And remember, my mom didn't have a mom. You know, just, she, she lost her mom when she was seven. And she said, she loved me, but it, when it came to raising a child, she had no perfect ways. She had no model to go by. Babies don't come with instructions. An entry in one of her journals reads, no perfect people, no perfect church, but we do have a perfect heaven to look forward to. We didn't have a perfect relationship, but when I, when I read that poem, I thought, Mom, if I'd have read this when you wrote it, if you'd have given it to me, it would have changed everything in our relationship. But she didn't let me know that. She wasn't open with me. We need to be open with our kids. Be transparent. We should all be transparent with each other because, you know, God created us the way we are. You know, our testimony of where we fall short and who we are is what's going to draw others to Christ. It's what's going to help others see they can make it. My mom wanted to over-direct, over-correct, and over-guide. I never really knew why, but she did tell me one time, and this might have a lot to do with it, it was unique to who I was also, right? Unique to who I was. I was very independent. She said, you wouldn't even let me rock you. I couldn't even rock you. You're a little toddler. You had a little rocking chair about that big, and I'd want to rock you to sleep, and you'd say, no, I can do it. And I'd go get my baby doll, and I'd sit in that rocking chair, and I'd rock myself to sleep rocking my baby doll. So I was very independent, and, uh, and that, you know, that's just who I am. I just pretty much handle a lot of things myself, and, I, and I've done that all my life. And uh, I think, well, what, what does that do to a young mom that's got her first baby? You know, what, what does that do to her? It's like, my baby doesn't want me to rock her, or my baby. I mean, you know, things... It's not that she was a bad mom. 
circumstances and situations make us who we are. And I'm here to tell you that if you have a relationship between you and your child or between you and your mom, that it's time that you put away the, the bitterness or put away the, the aggravation and that you remember that your mom loves you and that you know she's doing the best she can with what God's given her at that time. Now, as we grow, we learn more and more. If I could turn back the clock, I know I would handle this differently with my children. If I could turn back the clock, I'd handle things differently with my mom. But you know what? I cannot turn back the clock, but I can forgive myself, and I can forgive my mom, and I can forgive my children. And, and you know, there's just a lot of things in different relationships as, a, as, as time goes by that things get messed up sometimes. But what my mom did... She did love us. She loved us. And it was the kind of love that comes only when Jesus is inside of you. It's unconditional. She loved Jesus with everything in her. She loved the Lord. If you're around her even a few minutes, you're going to hear about Jesus. Isn't that right? She was even cautioned at the nursing home about her constant witnessing. They were calling her down for that because she'd witness to everybody here's what I say go get them mom go get them be a warrior for Christ if they kick you out of the nursing home you can just you can go out there and witness to the people on the street <laughs> as Proverbs 6 20 and 21 says my son keep your father's commandments and forsake not your mother's teaching bind them in your heart always and tie them around your neck when you walk they will lead you when you lie down, they will watch over you. And when you awake, they will talk to you. Listen, do you know what it's saying? My kids today out there, when that son's driving that motorcycle too fast, my words are talking to him. Slow it down. Slow it down. He hears his mom's voice. It's important that you train your children. Train them. Discipline them, don't distract them, and don't bail them out or they will never become who God created them to be. They'll be nothing more than somebody that knows how to whine for mommy or daddy. And fathers, you take the, take the role in your home to be the leader. It says the father's commandments. I don't know if you picked up on that. My son, keep your father's commandments and forsake not your mother's teaching. How many times do us mothers teach our children something and they're not listening and you say, you just wait till your daddy gets home, okay? Because fathers can take one look and one commandment and that child is usually not going to do that again, right? But do you know that's in the word? Keep your father's commandments and forsake not your mother's teaching. We need to speak the word over our children. I didn't mean to turn this in a length, into a lengthy sermon, and I don't mean for some of you to be falling asleep if it's getting boring for you. But I am my mom's daughter, and constant preaching or con constant witnessing is who I am because God lives in me. I'm just following in her footsteps. And if you have anything in your life with your children or your parents, that is bothering you or that keeps you from having that peace down inside, I want to invite you up here with me and we'll pray for you because the Lord says, let him comfort you as a mother comforts. The Lord will comfort you through whatever you're walking through. If you apply these scriptures to your journey, only with God can you see the promises in his word come alive in your life. But you have to apply them. You can't just read them and walk out. You have to apply them to your life. I will always love and miss you, Mom. After all is said and done, I think she had very perfect ways. And I hope she's watching today because she'd be saying, go get them, Tricia. Amen, amen. <laughs>